In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly install asphalt shingles on your roof. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install an Owens Corning Duration Cool Shingle. We're an Owens Corning certified platinum contractor and prefer using Owens Corning products. However, if you're installing a different shingle, make sure to check with the shingle manufacturer specifications to look at two things. Number one is the placement of the shingles nails. Uh, it's called the nailing zone on the shingle. And the second is the spacing of the nails. Uh, each climate zone, each state has different requirements as far as the number of nails used and the type of shingle pattern you want to be using. So we're based in Southern California. That's what we're roofing towards. The general concepts apply everywhere, but there are some details that you should look at specific to your shingle and specific to your area. Let's get into it and we'll show you how. Now that we've installed our starter strip, we're ready to start installing our shingles. Even though shingle installation is not hugely complicated, there are a few nuances and things that we have to remember when installing a shingle. Being again that this is a demo roof, we're gonna assume this is our rake here. Uh, we don't have a clean end, but we're gonna assume that this is our rake end. We always wanna start off with a full piece of shingle. We're gonna be aligning it flush with our uh, starter strip. If you, have, if you don't know how to watch, uh, install a starter strip, watch our previous video where we show you how to properly overhang it and we're not finishing flush with our drip edge. Now, our first piece of shingle, we have to make sure that we're properly overlapping it. Um, if you watch our starter shingle video, you'll notice that we cut the first piece of starter strip. And the reason for this is we never want this joint to align because the water here will go through and pass this line. We always cut the starter strip six inches so that we have a proper overlap here of at least six inches. And we always want to make sure that we don't have nails installed in our starter strip at this joint. For example, if we were to line up like this, we have a nail head here, and any water coming into this cavity into that joint is gonna bleed through this nail head. So thankfully we've properly installed our starter strip and we can install our full piece of shingle. We've got our overlap and no nails. So we're ready to get started. Now when installing a shingle, you want to place four nails. Um, different areas have different nailing patterns. If you're in a high wind area, tornadoes that have high speed winds, anything over 120 miles per hour, you generally want to use eight nails or six, depending again on the shingle manufacturer. But for our area, we're installing four nails. And for this demonstration, it'll be four. So the first nail you want to put it about an inch in from each side. Now the nails are very important that the nail heads are flush with this. If you overdrive your nails, I'm going to show you an example right here. You can see here, this is an overdriven nail. This is improperly nailed. You don't want this. You want to make sure that your nail head is flush. Most nail guns have an adjustment here as well as the compressor settings. So let's see how that looks. It's still a little bit overdriven. There you go, that's a properly driven nail. Now we're installing Owens Corning shingles and we really like them because they have the sure nail strip. You can see here, it's a fiberglass matting on top of the shingle, which gives you good hold. And most importantly, it tells you where to nail. You shouldn't be nailing anywhere else besides the nail zone. Each shingle is a little bit different, whether it's OC or GAF. Every shingle manufacturer has a different nailing zone, so please make sure to look at the proper installation for the shingle that you're installing. So now that we've installed our first shingle, we're ready to install our second one. Now we've pre-cut these shingles to be staggered six inches. Now this example that I did, this sample nail, is in the incorrect location. Uh, again, you can see that it's coming up right to our joint. So in a real world application, you wouldn't want this. I was just showing you how to not install a roof. You wanna make sure that this top shingle here is flush with this and flush at the ends. Now, when you're cutting your shingles, you wanna always make sure that the cut end is on the inside of your roof and not on the rake end. Because your rake end is what's gonna be exposed and needs to look nice. You want your cut ends to be joined it here. So again, when installing, place one nail about an inch from each side. And you can always use your nail gun to tap it, make sure it's aligned. An inch from each side. Then you wanna go 12 inches in. 
And the reason for that 12 inch is that you don't have a nail when installing your third shingle. We cut the, sh the shingle six inches in from each side. Again, the cut end is on the inside. And that 12 inch spacing ensures that we don't have a nail in this cavity right here. So we've got good placing from this nail here and good placement from this nail. Again, we're gonna line these shingles. Again, one inch from this side, one inch from this side, then two nails placed about 12 inches. We're ensuring this placement is really the most important. You wanna have 12 inches here for your next shingle. And again, we've got our next shingle pre-cut. Now on these shingles, when we're down to less than 24 inches, you wanna place one at each end, each end, and again, one in the middle, ensuring that you have no more than 12 inch spacing between nails. So we've got 12 inches here and 12 inches here. We have no need for the third nail. Now we've installed our first row of shingles. You can see each one is cut back six inches, and this allows us to properly continue the rest of the roof. Again, I want to remind you, be careful with these kind of nails. Anytime you've got a nail too close to that joint, you've got to replace this shingle to make sure that this nail is not in that place. But again, this being a mock roof, we're going to leave that in there and continue with the rest of the roof. Really from here on out, it's smooth sailing. We've already got our proper placement between shingles. You want to butt that shingle up. And again, we're going to go one inch from each side, making sure that we, we don't overdrive nails. Then again, 12 inches in from each side. And make sure that's properly aligned. Now one trick you can do is first in install the one nail here. Then being that you only have one nail there, you can properly pivot this shingle. So if you're installing, a lot of times we'll just pop one nail there, properly align this, put one nail in the middle, then put our two nails in the center here. So those are the basic concepts when install a shingle roof. I wanna go over a few of the most important things. First of all, is your staggered pattern. You wanna do five and a half to six inches per shingle. Staggering down, that's gonna be on your first row. Always make sure to put your cut ends on the inside so that your clean ends are facing um, the street side. When installing the shingles, you wanna make sure that you don't have nails in this gap right here. You wanna make sure that your shingles are aligned. And most importantly, you wanna make sure that your nail heads are flush. Those are pretty much the basic rules when installing shingles and basic things to look out for. I'm gonna help ask the guys to give me a hand to wrap up the rest of this roof. We've, we've installed our shingles and we're up to our hip right now. So in this area, what we like to do is overlap the first layer of shingles, you can see we've come now when we're installing shingles on this side, what we wanna do is bring it over here and cut it straight. So we don't need this overlap. So we'll install a nail just to keep it straight. Now it's not super important for this line to be perfectly straight because we're gonna be installing our hip and ridge shingles in a later video shortly. Now that we've come to the rake, I want to show you how to properly cut and place these shingles over here. So this is our finished edge right here, and we've got our shingles pre-cut. As I mentioned before, you always want to make sure your cut edge goes on the inside and not on the outside. Whatever we do, we can never get a perfectly straight line just as a factory. So that's why we always want to make sure our cut edge is here, our clean edge is here. We're aligning these properly. and ready to install. Being that this is a smaller shingle, we don't need to do four nails. Um, really, this is slightly more than 12 inches, so I'm gonna add one nail right in the middle here. Now our next shingle is the same thing, pre-cut. 
We've cut it on this side, left the factory edge on the exterior, and we're ready to install. Now one thing to be aware of, if in the case um, that if we were cut to come too close, you never want to have a shingle that's smaller than six inches. For example, if we were to end right here and we had three inches, you can see here, we don't want to have too narrow of a strip because that's a danger to blow off. Uh, what we want to do is cut this shingle. We would actually cut this back three inches to have a six inch piece here. So luckily in this case, we we're able to finish the shelf with large pieces, but keep in mind, you never want to install narrow shingles because those are easy to blow off. Now that you've got the basics down for the shingle install, we want to get into some of the other penetrations around pipe flashings, around different uh, flashings, roof to walls, stuff like that. So tune into our next video to see the continuation on how to properly install a shingle roof. Guys, thanks for watching. In the next video, I want to show you how to properly install hip and ridge caps after you've installed your shingles. Like, subscribe, and if you have any comments, questions, or like to do anything differently, let us know below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching again.